G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. I'm just about ready to go into the studio to get a video put together. So let's get in there and get started. Okay, thank you for joining me in this studio. Like I said, my name is Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. I want to show you what you can paint in acrylic. And I want to give a big shout out, thank you to Sketchpedia for the reference photo, the size of the canvas and the colors going up the screen. They're what I'm going to use in this video today. So stick around to the end because we've got an exciting reveal, all right? So let's get into this. So here's a reference picture from Sketchpedia I found on FreePix, and I'm going to show you how to put that onto a canvas. I want to start off with titanium white, soft body titanium white in my two inch putter on a brush, 50 millimeter. And I simply want this all over my canvas just so as I can merge the colors from the light source in the center to the darker colors in the edge of the forest there. Okay, I've got that all pushed on there the way I need it. Now I want to stroke it left and right just to get it nice, thin, even film. Now, like in the picture here, I want to get this opened sky area with a bit of a glare. And I'm seeing some grey and some magenta in there, just some warmth before we fade into the viridian green around here. That's what I'm going to do on the canvas here. So I'm going to get my cerulean blue and grey. I want it really grey, a real grey blue vibe of this. So it's a, I've got mid-tone grey with a bit of blue mixed in there. And I'm looking at the reference as a reference only, so it's pretty much all around here. The window of it's all about there, okay? So what I want to do is just push this on, get it onto that area, let it come beyond that point. Now it's up to you how abstract you make your painting. You can leave the sky like that. Now in that colour, we want to get a little bit of magenta just to warm it up. And this will really add some warmth in the centre of our painting there. And I want this around the edge of that. I don't want it right in there. So I want to get this all around the edge of that. Just like so. Pick it up some more. Because the canvas is... There we go. Now what I will do is grab another brush Let's just pretend I cleaned that putter on a brush. I've got another one here. And I want to just stroke that left and right, get it nice and smooth like so. I wipe it. And I want to just fade it from the white as well now, just like that. Ready for my Viridian Green. Now looking at the picture, I want the Viridian Green See where this is solid and it's starting to fade from about here. Okay, look at this. That's where I want my Viridian Green and then I'll peek it up. So I'll pick this up and I want to just start getting this to that area like I said. There we go, down here. And we've pretty much got the whole base of the canvas now viridianed up. Now there's no retarder in this. Just like so. Now I've simply just thrown some hookers green down there. Just so as I can get some dark values in there. Because that is quite light. And I'm looking, I want bits of this coming up like so. Real dark along here. I want to gradually darken this up. So I'll get it here. I'm just using the side of me putter on a brush. I'm going to just stroke that. Getting that up now, because that's the way the trees are going to lay. But I want to get rid of the, there we go. Because we're going to go back to the Viridian and get that vivid green going in there like it is in the picture there. Now I've got a soft fan brush, just something I can get nice sharp points up there with out of that colour into this sky here. So let's just try. There we go. And I just want to flick up some trees like this uh, within 
the same way it's looking in the reference picture kind of just there now I'm not looking at the reference I'm doing my own thing here if I keep going backwards and forwards I'll be sort of going jimity jabbity and getting confused and tripping over so I've just looked now I'm back here getting these reasonably sharp I've probably got more than I need there but that'll do just something up there now I'm going to just kind of pull the very bottom here see how in between all these you can see a bit of flatness I'm just distorting that flatness just to get that pleasing to the eye look there we go now watch the video and practice this this is easy you can do this I'm showing you what you can do because I know you can do it now I simply want to create my detail tree so what I'm going to do is let's say this one here is going to be a detail tree I'm going to get him on there and just come down like so now what I will do I don't need to do any blending and because this is wet the more I pad this watch this I'll just show you here the more I pad it it's going to get white and pale now you don't need that you don't want that so let's start from scratch again I'll get that the way it is before we detail it we'll give this a dry now I've dried it and what I'm going to do before I detail these I just thought is see what I've done here I've just done a bit off camera I'm just getting because we want the depth here I'm just getting this to a degree there so as I can bring the next bit in front of it and this will look deep and long far away so I'm just getting me little brush my fan brush now this is a watercolor fan brush because it's 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 very soft but I find it quite good for doing bits like this so work out what brush you've got in your arsenal is going to work for you and you just want to kind of taper some darkness down from these spikes now let's call them spikes for now until they turn into trees just like so now what I want to do is just grab this brush and like I started before just detailing a few pine trees out here so now I'll stamp this on and it's not going to go white like it was when it was wet you can probably even come them down like that and make them a bit wider that's what I was doing in the first place So I just want to get you over here and just show you how I'm just getting that look. I've got this brush, right? See the, the base of it right there at the bottom? I'm grabbing that, watch. Because the more I did the world, the more I realised what I can do. I'm stabbing it on and then I'm letting it push out to create the hairy bits and coming wider as I get to the bottom, just like so. You'll notice the first ones I did, I didn't know what I was doing as well as what I'm doing now. And I was using this bit and it was doing too much of a solid but knowing to come to here, it was able to get it a better looking shape. Now I've got the leftover. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre, mostly yellow ochre, just to this degree here. I'll wet that a bit so it's going to come off the brush. And see I've got that kind of khaki colour green. I want to use that just to fade the tops of those trees now. I can see a slight vibe of this within the reference. So what I want to do is just the very tops. Just fade them because that light is burning the tops of these trees with this color. So I'm just going to tinselize that to there. Now, depending how far you are in your journey, if you don't want to do this, you simply don't have to. You can leave it out. And when you feel you want to go that extra step, putting those more detailed vibes in your painting, you can. This is all detail at the back, but it's just going to make for beautiful vibes within your painting. Okay, I'm going to grab some of that, mainly on the yellow ochre side of it, just there. Get a bit more of the khaki into it. So you can tell this is a watercolour one, because when you wet these brushes, they finger out like that. And I want to get a bit of white into that to really get the light into it and once again this is a bit brighter than what I just put on there then and this is just simply gonna really burn them 
So you've got the viridian, the khaki, and now you want this just over the very tops, just so it looks like you've got the light burning right through the very thin parts of it. Just finishing off now with some, you know, the little scratchy ones, just highlighting some of those, just filtering them down a little bit, just so now it feels like we've got the light burning the tops of those. Now see how we got this ground, the mid ground here coming down. What I want to do, see all this dark bit here? I want to filter that up for what I've already got on the canvas. So you know what's going on. So I pretty much got that mid ground coming up and down like this. So I want to just get this a little bit darker now. And I've got some perylene green over here. I'm going to mix it with that viridian because I don't want it pure perylene. It might look black against it. I, want, I need it to be the very dark viridian. Simply work out where your, you know, your, your ground's going to come around like that. And you simply want to leave the middle a bit lighter though. And you simply want to come from here, come from there, and then just start filtering this up and then let it, see there, I'm going to filter it up and let it get scratchy. Just like that. So I'll get this a bit darker all the way up there. Right up there, right against the, have a look there, yeah, right against the edge there. That can be nice and dark. Framing the painting. And a bit over here. Right dark against there. Let it scratch into the, the other colours there. This is a lot quicker, I can just push it on instead of doing like that. And I'm scratching it up. Get that right up there. In between bits and bobs. See how easy this is? Oh, I'm coming down to nothing there now. I just want to get that scratched right up though. The top side is what I'm worried about. Down here, all this business, I'm not worried about that. Now just to get a bit of a brighter glow around this area here, I want to grab some of this white. The best way to mix two colours when there's a light and a dark, start with the amount, I want about this much, okay? So start with that amount in your lighter colour and then slowly introduce the darker colour till it's the vibe you want. If I tried to mix this white into that much, I'm going to need more of this colour to get the vibe that I know I'm after. I want to get the subtlest lightness out here now. I'll come up and down like this, nice up and down strokes. Fading these into that darker colour there, just around here. Look how easy this is, you can do it. Looking at the reference, getting some vibes and ideas from it. Because when I use a reference, that's all it is, it's for ideas. I'll show you the reference to this painting when it's finished and you'll just see how different they are. Now, long story short, what I've simply gone and done, get a bit of dark there, is this is the window we're going to see in our foreground forest and it's just detailed background. So we finish that, we're ready to put the mid-ground in and our stream. So looking at the reference here, I want a block. See where this little stream finishes about there? It's just tucking around the corner. I want to block all this in with just dark black, your dark colour. So if anything, I want a bit of warmth in my dark colour. I've got my French Ultramarine and I've got my Quinacridone Magenta and I'm going to mix up a very dark colour. Okay, now that's quite purple. I'm just going to try a bit of... Prussian just to see how it darkens it up. Yeah, that's that's okay Now I'm looking at the reference and it's pretty much well mine's mine's come a bit lower All this is going to be colored Just to me dark color there Pull it down 
Now I'm not looking at the reference to work out how high or what angle. I've used the reference to know that I've got to put this there. So I'm putting this there my way. So I'm not going to get confused. I want to scramble this just into that top dark color there. Brush stroke it so there's no big lumps and bumps and surprises in there. Okay, now over this side of the pile, I've got burnt umber mixed with it. Yeah, this is this is all right. So I'm just going to scratch this in now to that purpley colour. So we've got that vibe. Look at that earthy colours, shadowy colours. Now this is dry. I want to get the river stream in there. And in the reference, the river's dark, greeny, and some sky there. So to save confusion, I'm just going to put my river in, in the sky color. So it's all there. And then where appropriate, I can pull down my reflections into the sky color and we'll be left with the appropriate amount of sky from what's up above in our painting here. So you've saved your paints like I've always telling you nowadays. Keep them because you might need them. There's my sky colour there. I want to just grab a flat brush and something I can go left and right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this stick or not. I'm just going to get a, an eye on the reference and work out the rivers about here. And you want to get this left and right. Try not to paint them around where it looks like you're in a helicopter. I'm just going to use a reference and get an idea. So, okay, the side of this river needs to come pretty much all down here and then straight across and right off, right off there. There. And this side can come down about there. And then it's going to come right around and right off down here as well. Paint the water in there. Now, see the edge? We gotta have some darkness there where it meets the ground and the sand and the rocks. So I might take a few layers of this. So I'm just gonna take my time and just gingerly left and right. A lot of it's gonna be darkened up and I'm just slowly building it up. Now I want to show you something that's quite important when you're using a reference picture. There's me lake. This water is nowhere near the shape of the reference picture. Mine has turned out like this. We're in the reference, it's all the way down here and coming around. Now I don't want to get mine and try and make all this shape out of mine. Mine has ended up like this, so I got to put those subjects on here but following my shape, not that shape, okay? That's how you can conquer a reference. You're making it your own. Now here's a bit of fun for you. I did a video a few years ago, understanding your greens. I made this chart. I'll put the link in the description below for this video. Now, see this grass here? I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not, but that's the vivid color I want. And how did I get that? So I've got, I'm gonna push this against there. And whether the, camera's picking it up or not this is the vibe I want right here and a bit of darkness and how do I get that vibe well lo and behold it's cadmium yellow light and phalo blue and I started with the cadmium yellow light a little bit of phalo blue a little bit more a bit more and a bit more and a bit more so that's how I know I'm going to get that vibe so I've got my Cadmium yellow light, that's the amount I want. Remember before I said you just start with your lighter color and I wanna pick up phalo blue and we're gonna start getting that vibe. Now have I put too much phalo blue there? I can put my brush against the screen and just get an idea of how I'm going. Get some hydrated water on my brush and then to darken this, like it was on the chart, I just simply add more phalo. So now what I'm going to do is grab some more phalo blue. 
Mix this over here, both sides of the brush. Get a darker value of this. So now what I want to do is just bring this to my river. I'm using, I've just got a flat wedge brush because I find that can give me, I looked at the reference picture and I want that kind of look in my grass and this will give me the kind of um, scratchiness that I want. So I'll probably start from way out here. Now see the river, did I dry that? You want it dry. And I've still got some of that darkness of that base colour underneath as well. And when I highlight this, it'll be okay. And then I can add my reflections to the river as I need them. It's kind of billowy and lumpy like this. So leaving a lot of the darks there. I'll do the other side because that's the way it looks better. Um, we've got say here, we've got a lot of it just underneath. I want to leave some dark and it's just kind of caressing down, making all sorts of lumps and bumps. And when we put the highlight on this, it'll shape it a lot more. Cascading down. So I'm just kind of whispering this around like that and the the highlight one can dribble beyond past this as well so i'm going to turn the camera off and keep doing this all the way over till i'm happy with it over here is coming all right so i'll put the camera on here just so you can see what's going on here chiseling the brush each time i load it up now it's kind of referencing the way it looks in the reference picture, but it's not. My picture's taken on its own form, so I want to let it keep taking on its own form. And this is in front of the water because you can't see behind it. And about here, over the water, and then about here, you'll start getting shadow. So see what I've done there? Over the water. And then here you're going to see underneath, so I'll leave that. Okay, that can have a dry. Now before we do any more, I want to get the appropriate colours into our water. So I'm going to grab all this dark colour here, which is the hooker's green and perylene green. I'm just using Hooker's Green because my good friend Noreen told me about Hooker's Green. So now what I want to do is simply use this little flat brush and I've got the Noreen Hooker Green there. And I want to come pretty much from about here. So I'm going to, what I want to do is put it on and just start, where is it? It's pretty all the way down. So scratch it right down, get it on there and scratch it down. Put it on, scratch it down. Now I'm going to look in there. Some of that's got a lot of dirt in it, but mine doesn't have to have all that dirt in it. So we're coming down all the way to about here. And you watch how this comes to life when we start doing this. Squash that on and use a brush to pull it down. So it's scratchy and if you're seeing any of the water there, well, it looks the part. Okay, now what's over this side? We do have a bit over here as well, coming from about here. So we're gonna come about there and just scratch it down a little bit. Because I like the way it's got that open window of the light in the reflection. And then this is coming a bit lower now from about here, all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. So see how the thickness of the bottom of my river is here? You can learn from this video how high to make yours so yours wasn't, I didn't know mine was gonna happen like this and be so small here. I would've liked this volume to be bigger, but this is the first time I'm painting this painting, so 
I'm as aware of it as much as you were. And this is all pretty dark here. I'm going to grab this dark colour here because there is a rock. There's quite a few rocks in the front of the river there. And I want to put one about here. So I'm going to use this just as the rock. Where are we? I'll put this about here. Just something. Uh, make the bottom a little bit rounded and then give your rock its shape. And then dry this. I'm pulling it down now. Now before we put the highlight on that, we need the bigger foreground trees there so it can start creeping up as well. So what we're going to do is put the trees there, then we can put our highlights. And don't worry if you go over your trunk a bit because the tree's only going to be blocked in. We can put the final colours over that to sink them back. So for the tree I've used burn umber and some black to get it the vibe I want. I'm using a medium flat brush. And I looked in the reference, there's a tree here with its reflection in the water, so I want to make sure I capture that within my piece. Now, we simply, I'll grab my stick, and where are we? We'll put one, where's that bank? We'll put one about here. Where how far from the bank is it? About here. So I'm just going to come straight up, leaning against me, stick there. Put one there. Uh, something right on the edge, just... How far is that about here? Nice thick one. Take your stick straight in, you're moving it. I know. And these are going straight up and off the painting. This one's a bit skinnier and it's going right up here. Now this stick's just going to help me keep it level. Too close together here. Very skinny. Two. Right up there. Nice fat one. Now there they are, I'll get just the reflection in the water here, so I want this one just fading there, there, and this is how the water's going to make all of its reflections up. So you just add it all in as you go. Now what I'm going to do is, I'll do it off camera, but these trees, they pretty much cone out at the bottom and grip the ground in some kind of way. And I'm just going to, a little bit at the back as well, and down. I'm going to block these in now and get the shape that I want them to be. I just thought I'd share this bit with you, my tree's ending about here. I've just taped this up. And it's a, you can do it to all your trees if you want, making them the thickness that you want. And then just simply brush them in, put this on. I got it there without any dramas. Then simply come to the base of the tree and bulb it up, bulge it up, make it look that big and thumpy down the bottom there where it's reaching the ground, something like that. Because our details are sink these back. This one can just have a bit of a toss out there. Now they're dry. That brush I used, I want to get the, the left hand side of each trunk highlighted. I'm going to do a big trunk just to show you the method I'm going to do it in. I have burnt sienna and raw sienna. I want to grab the burnt sienna 
I've put some tape on the left hand side of the two trees that I'm going to do it to so to show you. Now the tape is a wee bit beyond the black so when I put this on you're not going to have a black line. Now we just want to get this burnt sienna and we want to just come to that edge of the painting, um, not the painting, the tree, let it fold into the tree breaking up but this edge here will do it dark and what I'm going to do is just simply put that on there, wipe that off, grab some of the raw sienna, now I'm going to dry that a little bit just so as the raw sienna will stick and I want to get this to the edge, this is the very highlighted bit. So grabbing the burnt sienna, coming along the edge there, letting it break into the side of the tree, just to the bottom there somewhere. I will grab the dark colour again, it's a playing with it backwards and forwards, I'm grabbing the, the burn umber, just so as I can get here and let those two bleed together. I like that word bleed because they bleed together instead of just laying together. There we go. Cleaning your brush and grabbing the raw sienna. And find the very, I've dried that a bit because it was too wet. Get this right against the edge there and you want this just to bleed. I'm going to wipe it off now and you want this just to bleed into the burnt sienna and it just adds a nice crisp Highlight to one side of the tree there. Take the tape off. And you can just see how they are. And if you've got any that are too dark, I mean too bright, like this one here, I, you, I'm just going to show you on this one before I turn the camera off. You can set it back just like that, scraping it through. So now I'm going to do that to the rest of the trees there. Oh, I'm just finishing off. This is a thicker tree. Now these thin ones way out there, that's why I've turned the camera back on. These ones here are pretty much the skinniness up there is all the highlighted colour and you can just slowly as you come down let it be the darker colour there just like that. When I take the tape off I'm going to look at all my trees and if I feel some of them need some darkness pushed back in there, I'll simply just push the darkness back in there. And also, I've done one, just get some resemblance where they need it in the reflection there just adds for more detail in your water. You want them straight though, that looks a bit crooked Ian. I know. I've added some white to that raw sienna. I've done a few off camera and I've just got, where are we, looked at there, this one's all the way from there, a lot more heavier light hitting this. Now this is all dry, we've got all this in there, we want to start bringing the highlights of this ground in. So this colour over here that we mixed with the yellow, cadmium yellow light and the phalo blue, we want to grab this now and highlight it. Nice and scratchy. This is going to make the detail. Now with your trees, I'll um, like say here, it's going to go behind the trees, let's say here, coming down. Don't worry too much if you hit the tree because we've still got to highlight the bottom of the trees. So there's going to be all bits of this coming through dancing over that dark bits there, scratching it and see the tree trunk. What I want to do with this is get some of this and creep up our tree just like so. We've just got some, leaving the dark bits there. 
and just kind of get this one coming up the tree there and this is just lacing over the dark where the bank of the river is getting to the river's edge there The edges here a bit more refined. That rock I put here, I'm grabbing the, the dark green and I just want to get the moss on this to the very top side of it. Just creating that round mushroomy dome shape there, helmet shape. And I want to grab the lighter colour of that now. And I just want to get the finest little highlights on that as well. Pulling some of that into the water. Oh, someone's calling me. I'm grabbing some more cadmium yellow light and putting into that mix just to get a real highlighted version. I might do just the top of this a bit. And over here, I want to get like the light hitting a lot of this. Now I've grabbed the blue and the grey, mixed it together and tinted it with a little bit of white. Now it's not in the reference picture, but I feel my painting needs it. I want a bit of water just hitting the bank here. So I just want to gingerly come along and start sinking everything back. Leaving that dark bank there, don't cover that darkness up. I'm going to get a lot of that off the brush just so as I can sink everything down in order like you don't want the water coming in front of the rock you want it in just in front of the rocks reflection these trees here just there gingerly I want to soften some of those hard ones, so I'm going to come back again and see if I can soften them. Getting the reflection of that rock underwater, there we go, and those trees. And we've got pretty much a film on top of the water now, as you can see. Now, you can find a reference point in your lake, I'm looking about here, I might want some concentrated ripples like this, right in this area. Grab some black and work out which trees, let's say here, You might want some branches, it's too thick. Um, let's say this one here. I want to come halfway in the, the trunk, just kind of giving that vibe of, I don't know, these sort of branches. And on the other side, I'll probably come 
just to the side of the trunk, not in it. So it'll look like they're on um, the other side. And as I come down, I feel I'm just going to start pointing them downwards, just like this. Go beyond the black. Give that a draw and just pick up the lighter colour now. Now go beyond again, beyond and just into it. Beyond and into it. Yeah, you can see what I've done there. I've grabbed some of the dark burn umber and black and where it's hitting the trunk, just sort of pull down a bit of a darkish shadow. It sits them in there. They just look more greatness for your art. Now, as you can see, there's a reference picture. Mine looks nothing like it. I've just used it to create this piece of art. All right, I want to sign this and then we'll reveal it and whack a frame on it and see how she looks. So thank you very much for sticking around to the end. And just wait till we reveal this. It's real exciting. And thank you everybody who supports my content. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a beautiful forest river stream there. Nice and eye-catching, and I know you can do it. Well, I must say, I really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.